Hello guys, welcome to our channel today we are going to discuss what was hygiene like in the Wild West. Relax and enjoy. Hygiene in the American Wild West was probably about what you'd expect unhygienic. Men and women who made their way west across the North American landscape contended with harsh weather and difficult terrain, a less than ideal situation for finding a place to bathe. With the journey to new lands came a perpetual quest to find clean water, something that could be a matter of vital importance. In difficult conditions, the practicalities of survival often outweighed concern for cleanliness. Days or weeks without a bath, living in close quarters, and the lack of adequate toilet facilities all contributed to a life in the Wild West, characterized by foul smells, constant disease, and a generally squalid existence. Beds could be full of seam squirrels. Not all beds in the American West were made of straw and hay, but many were. Such bedding wasn't changed often, leading to infestation by lice and other critters. Lice, or seam squirrels, were just one of the troublesome groups of insects that could make life in the Wild West less than hygienic. Flies found their way into foodstuffs and human waste, mosquitoes flocked into poorly insulated buildings. Rose Pender, a visitor to the American West from 1883 to 1888, recalled one night when she tried to sleep, bugs abounded, so I got very little rest. Very few people had screens on windows, so bugs would make their way from homes to outhouses and back again leaving remnants of whatever they'd picked up along the way. Outhouses were home to odors and bugs. Outhouses were part of frontier life, though some people simply relieved themselves in the woods. Outhouses were built near houses and homesteads, however, in the interest of convenience and safety. A hole would be dug and a wooden structure erected above it. Once the hole was full, it was simply covered up, and the wooden structure was put over another hole, typically dug nearby. The outhouse was not a pleasant smelling sight, and people would often try to mask the odor with lye or lime. Bugs were common, especially flies and black widow spiders, the latter often inclined to bite as individuals sat down on a wooded seat. Toilet paper didn't exist in its modern form, so people used whatever they could find, leaves, corn cobs, and grass were common. Clean water could be difficult to come by. Water was an essential part of survival in the Wild West, but finding clean water wasn't always easy. Sometimes the outhouses built by homesteads upstream contaminated water, something that wasn't always known by individuals who used the nearby water. More acutely, stagnant water attracted flies and other insects that would leave waste and excrement as they hovered over puddles. Still another problem was collecting rainwater into cisterns water that was clean until dust and other contaminants got mixed in. To preserve water, people would refrain from washing dishes and clothing or use bathwater for that purpose. Often, entire families used the same tub of water, a weekly occurrence if they were lucky. When Rose Pender visited the West, she delighted in the refreshing bath, a luxury she had not had for 10 days. Soap was made from animal fat or plants, if at all. Frank Clifford, a man also known as John Menham Whiteman and John Francis Wallace, wrote a memoir about his time in the American West. An associate of Billy the Kid, Clifford provided details of the soap weed Mexican women used to wash their hair. Soap weed was from the yucca plant and, according to Clifford, he had his hair washed with soap weed root many times. The shampoo left the hair soft and clean and lustrous. While some people used soap weed, settlers made soap out of animal fat, something they also turned into candles. Homemade soap was harsh and could cause skin irritation, but there wasn't a huge emphasis on making it either way. Body odor was considered a natural part of life. Similarly, the belief that too much cleanliness opened pores to germs and disease gave people little motivation to bathe. Oral health care often meant tooth extraction. Toothbrushes, toothpaste, dental floss, and the like weren't present in the Wild West. When a tooth became problematic, it usually just got pulled. With nothing resemming a modern dentist, people turned to barbers and even blacksmiths, men who would pull a sore tooth out of their mouth using tools akin to pliers. No pain medication was applied, though whiskey could be used to take the edge off. There were some options to stave off an extraction, but people generally didn't worry about oral hygiene. In some stagecoach stop-offs and public establishments, people would use a community toothbrush and frequently pick food out of their teeth using knives. Communal towels were used to wipe off beer foam. Bars in the Wild West didn't have stools, but they did usually have rails at the bottom for leaning and for spittoons. Along the top of the bar, there may have been a cuspider, an additional rail, or a series of hooks. The latter two features were designed to hold towels that men used to wipe their mouths of any excess beer foam. 
These towels were used by countless patrons, contributing to the spread of germs and disease in the process. Dust was everywhere. As Sarah Atherton, her husband Jed, and their children made their way across the western landscape, Sarah's eyes burned, as described in Mary Ellen Jones' daily life on the 19th century American frontier. The dust was everywhere, and since early afternoon she'd been staring into the sun. Her sunbonnet offered little protection from both beating down on her. The presence of dust in the Wild West was pervasive. Dust storms and heavy winds could send clouds of dirt and grime into houses, while simultaneously threatening the lives of cattle and setters alike. Sarah Raymond Herndon, a young girl who made the journey from Missouri to the Montana Territory during the late 1860s, recalled. Oh, the dust, the dust, it is terrible. I have never seen it half as bad, it seems to be almost knee-deep in places. We came 20 miles without stopping and then camped for the night when we stopped, the boys' faces were a sight, they were covered with all the dust that could stick on. One could just see the apertures where eyes, nose and mouth were through the dust, their appearance was frightful. How glad we all are to have plenty of clear cold water to wash away the dust. Spitting was so prevalent, it had to be outlawed. In saloons throughout the western frontier, men spit tobacco onto the floor where spittoons and cuspiders lined the front of the bar. Spit was covered with sawdust, but that became problematic as respiratory diseases like pneumonia and tuberculosis ran rampant. Sawdust was a breeding ground for germs and, because saloons often rented out floors to travelers, people slept amid the muck around them. In an attempt to cease the excessive spitting, some places tried to ban the practice. Spitting on train platforms and stations was banned, punishable with a $500 fine, a year in prison, or both. Cholera and other diseases ran rampant. Because laundry, plumbing, and dishwashing took place in water used for drinking, it was common for disease to break out at camps and settlements throughout the American West. Cholera was particularly prevalent, ending the lives of settlers and native groups alike. During the 19th century, a series of cholera outbreaks among Mormon migrants claimed the lives of thousands, although the exact number will never be known. Seen as a punishment from God and a test of faith by Mormons, cholera was one of many diseases that wiped out large numbers of Native Americans. Outbreaks of the disease spread from overland trails to tribal communities and among Indian nomads. Still, cholera didn't claim as many natives as smallpox. According to Dr. J. B. Van Velsen in the Dakota Territory, Russian immigrants brought cholera to Yankton, the territorial capital. He described the Russians as from the lower classes, filthy in persons and habits, but couldn't have known that the spread of cholera was part of a much larger epidemic. Hair care involved whiskey and castor oil. Frank Clifford had his hair washed with soap weed, but there were other forms of shampoo available. Whiskey had many purposes in the Wild West, everything from disinfectant to pain reliever, but it was also used to wash hair. Mixed with castor oil and lavender, the shampoo was rinsed with rainwater or water softened with borax. After a good brushing or combing, women often curled their hair using heated pencils. Women were generally cleaner than men. Cowboys, soldiers, and other men in the Wild West often spent long days without bathing, only bringing an end to their lack of cleanliness with a dip in a local stream or river. Often done during the hot summer months, men usually skipped the activity during the winter. Cowboys and soldiers went for long periods of time without washing their clothes. When they did do laundry, so to speak, it was generally in a stream, river, or comparable water source. Thanks for watching. Do like, subscribe, and comment.